Hey, this is Hans from Dakota Angler and Outfitter. In this video, we're going to tie one of our favorite fly, warm water flies, the Murdich Minnow. For this version, we're going to tie it on a B10S stinger hook, Gamagatsu, in one knot. A great uh, hook for warm water flies, super sharp, and also um, really affordable. So a 25 pack um, is roughly the same cost as um, some companies like 10 packs so if you're going to tie a bunch of these for warm water it's a great go-to hook for a number of reasons so i've got that one out in the vise i put a little brush on super glue on the hook um, what that does is it helps our thread adhere to the hook a little bit and makes a more durable fly i'm using a hundred denier gel spun to start the fly i'm going to use uh, bucktail and what I'm looking for in this fly is a fly that's about five inches long. So if you want, when you tie your first one, grab a little ruler and then you can kind of look on your vise where five inches is and get a frame of reference for how long your fly needs to be. Now this, this fly has two tails. It has uh, our two tail materials. It has some bucktail and then some flash that overhangs the bucktail. And you're going to have your flash overhang the bucktail at least an inch or so, depending on how long a bucktail you can find. But I'm going to try to make my tail, my bucktail tail, get, get out to around that four inch range if I can. You want a pretty good clump of bucktail. This is a little bigger around than a Q-tip stem. I'm going to tie that in. There we go. And there's a few little strands here I can clean up. We'll cover them up as we go. Now if you want to make this a super durable fly, you can, as you go along, keep adding a little bit of brush on super glue or even something like liquid fusion. I'll just put a little bit of brush on super glue. Alright, so the next my flash is going to go on and my, my five inch mark is just about where this this behind that little Allen bolt there. So I'm going to use for this version, we're going to tie a gray and white version. And I'm going to use silver polar flash for my flash. And polar flash is nice because it's Got a little texture to it, moves really well in the water, but it's also kind of blended a little bit. I got some silver and pearl together. So lay my flash down. There we go, overhanging the bucktail. And I'm gonna leave this, cut this pretty long because I, I want some flash out in the front that I'm gonna fold back later. There we go, tie that down. Extends over the top of the bucktail. Next component of the wing is going to be some ice wing fiber from Hairline. And we're going to tie a clump of that on the top of the hook and on the bottom of the hook. And it's just going to kind of flank that. that tail and make a collar and we're going to want that to go back about a third of that buck tail or so and I'm going to leave the the part that I tie down from the ice wing fiber fairly long in front so that I'm building kind of a taper for the rest of my the head of my fly so I got my clump on the top now Cut an equal size clump and we'll use that on the bottom of the hook. And 
I can just roll my vise over. Just kind of split this clump around. I'll tie that down. Make sure it's kind of evenly distributed around the hook. Tie that down. I got my bottom clump a little long there. I'll just go in and trim that up a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now I've got tail, flash, and my collar. Now I'm going to take the remaining flash here. And I could have cut this a little shorter, but that's okay. We'll trim it to length. We're going to pull that over the top. Tie it down. There we go. And now I'll take that, that extra flash here. I'll just trim it the length of the collar. There. Okay. So now we're ready to move on and finish the fly with the head of our fly. And I'm going to use large pearl cactus chenille from Hairline. You could use pearl estaz. But what I like about this large cactus chenille, any real, any kind of pearl tinsely flash will work, but this one is really nice because it's really full. So you don't need as many turns of it to, to make the head of your fly. Nice thread pressure on there. Okay. If you want, don't get carried away so everything sticks together too much, but you could just add some more durability by just putting a little super glue in there. And you want a fair amount of this material available, so don't cut your piece too short. Just kind of fluff everything up as you go so you get a nice full full head and you're not trapping those those fibers down. Just keep going. You can wrap back over itself just a little bit if you need a little bit more bulk in, in a certain spot. And then don't crowd your eye too much here. We give ourselves plenty of room to finish the fly. Nice thing about the gel spun is you can really compact that down and make, keep your eye clean. Trim out your, your excess material. Then we'll go ahead and whip finish. Take our thread off. Okay, you probably fished the fly just like this, but we're gonna finish it with a marker and some eyes. And the first thing we'll do is take our marker. And since I'm doing a gray and white version, I'm just gonna take a gray marker and you go on the top half of the head and body. And mark that up. So just finish up. You want to make sure that marker really saturates into the, the head of the fly. Once you're done with that, we'll glue some eyes on. 
and I'm going to use fish skull living eyes in the ice color and I'm going to take some Loctite gel you don't need too much or else you'll stick the eyes to your fingers just kind of lightly set an eye in place with the gel on there and we'll push it in with the point of our scissors if you try to push it in right away with your fingers typically you stick it to your fingers and get glue everywhere so what I'll just do now is take my scissor straighten that eye out a little bit there we go kind of push it into the head and it takes a little bit for that glue to set Just roughly make sure they're in the same spot. And after that sets up a little bit more and there's not a lot of excess glue, you can squeeze it with your fingers and really press those eyes into the head. Okay, and then the last thing I do, since I once I push that in, it kind of distorts the head a little bit. I doubt the fish care, but you can just go ahead and round out the head of the fly just a little bit. Just give it a little bit of taper. One final push on the eyes there. And there we go. There's our Murdich minnow. Just a great fly for smallmouth, largemouth, pike, and in a saltwater version, um, it's also excellent for um, striped bass, which is where the pattern actually originated, but it's gained a lot of popularity um, as a smallmouth bass fly in particular. But just a super um, warm water pattern. For anything that eats bait fish and like I said can also be adapted to salt water. For salt water you want to change your hook. Not that a B10S wouldn't stand up to a little bit of salt water use, but something like a A-Rex Bob Clouser Signature Series hook, which is a nice stainless salt water hook with a good gap, um, which is just a nice um, nice alternative for for a salt water version. I'm Hans from Dakota Angler and Outfitter. Thanks for watching.